In this video, we are going to be talking about how we change vegetable oil to biodiesel via a transesterification reaction for our chemical engineering unit. The questions that you could, should think about um, during and during this video and to answer in your notebook are why can't we just use the oil from our algae um, in our engine and how can we make the oil usable in an engine? So let's talk about what fire is. Well, fire is a rapid gas phase oxidation of a material. So the fuel has to be in the gas phase and we need something to react with it um, to make it oxidize. And usually it's accompanied by an increase in gas volume. So it gives us more volume um, during the reaction. So in order for us to have this ongoing fire or chain reaction, we need three things to be happening. We need the fuel, we need an oxidizer, which is oxygen, and we need heat if our temperature is below the auto ignition temperature. And we'll define that a little bit later. Usually the heat is in form of a spark or some other sort of ignition. So what can we do with that? What does that give us? Well, we can harness that chemical energy in a combustion engine and use that to do work. And here you see an animation of a combustion engine where at the beginning of the animation we have gas coming into the chamber, it gets compressed in the chamber, and it's got a mixture of oxygen and fuel in there, and as it gets compressed we spark it and let it combust and it pushes the piston down and does work for us. And then piston comes back up and, and the exhaust gases come out. So we know that we can use this chemical reaction to do something very useful for us. So we want to be able to get the most out of our reactions. We want it all to go to the products as best we can, meaning we want to be able to force the reaction to the right. So here you see some reaction equations that are typical combustion reactions. And um, what you see is a hydrocarbon that reacts with oxygen going to the products being carbon dioxide and water. And we want this to be um, a complete reaction. And when we have that complete reaction going all the way to carbon dioxide and water, we get the most energy out of it. So we want the two phases to be together. We want oxygen, which exists in the gas phase, um, to be mixed with a gas phase of the hydrocarbon. And that's how we can um, get the most out of our reaction, or one way that we can do that. So what if the hydrocarbon is a liquid at room temperature? Well, let's uh, talk about that and see what, what um, types of fuel, what temperature they need to be at so that we can burn them. So let's define a few temperatures or a few important um, vocabulary. First, we're going to talk about what a flash point is. So that's the temperature at which there's enough of the stuff of the fuel in the air that creates a mixture that we can burn if we have a um, ignition source or a spark. So you can see here we have a diagram and along the x-axis is the number of carbons in the hydrocarbon molecule. So this is an estimate of the, if I have a chain of, of a hydrocarbon, this is the number of carbons in that chain. And as you see in the graph, as the number of carbons increases, then our flash point increases. And highlighted in, um, in the middle of the graph is where diesel burns, somewhere um, just under 100 degrees C, it has a flash point. And biodiesel isn't too far away from that, just a little bit above 100. Vegetable oil, however, is quite higher than that. Um, it doesn't have a flash point until over 300 degrees C. So um, that's not desirable for us to be able to, to burn it in a, an engine. Um, we talk about hydrocarbons, and basically it's just um, an, 
estimate of the number of carbons and, and talking about those as a, a chain of hydrocarbons. So like if you take a bunch of carbons and bond them together, they form a chain and you can, and then they have hydrogens bonded to those carbon molecules. So um, we talk about that uh, makeup. We can define different fuels as having numbers of carbons in their chain. So natural gas, which is very highly combustible, has, you know, generally one or um, a few other very volatile hydrocarbons. So one or two hydrocarbons with, uh, or carbons with their corresponding hydrogen atoms. Um, gasoline has more. It's usually a mixture of somewhere between four carbons and 12 carbons and their um, hydrogens that are bonded. Sometimes some oxygen is in there. Jet fuel is uh, between C8 and C16, so 8 to 16 carbons in, in those molecules. Kerosene is close to jet fuel. It's between 6 and 16. Diesel is between 10 and 15 um, carbons in those hydrocarbons with an average of about 12. So that gives you an idea of what those molecules sort of look like. Now, algae oil, which is like any vegetable oil, they're primarily triglycerides, which is three long hydrocarbon chains that are hooked together in um, kind of like a tripod. So there are three of them hooked together at the tip. And that's called a triglyceride. triglyceride. So what you see here in this diagram is um, a representation of a hydrocarbon chain, all uh, three of them hooked together in the middle, and that's our triglyceride. These are relatively heavy molecules, and if you think about them, they're because they're heavy and they're um, large, they don't easily combust. And if you've ever tried to burn vegetable oil, it doesn't easily light on fire like gasoline does. So why do we need to process algae oil? Well, we need, in order to be able to burn something in our combustion engine, our diesel engine, we need that fuel to act like diesel fuel. And we see that vegetable oil has a very much higher flash point and a higher auto ignition temperature. Auto ignition temperature just means that it's the temperature at which the substance will automatically combust or start to burn without the source, without an ignition source or without a spark. So we want our biodiesel fuel or whatever fuel that we're going to burn to have the similar properties to diesel. And you can see that biodiesel has a much closer um, flash point to diesel fuel and a closer auto ignition temperature to diesel fuel. So we've got to do something to this vegetable oil because it's so far away it really won't burn in our diesel engine um, like we would need it to. So we have this triglyceride. What can we do to make this molecule better? Make it so that it looks like diesel. Well what we can do is some a reaction called transesterification, where we're going to break this triglyceride molecule up. And you see the triglyceride over here on the left. And we're going to do this reaction to break it up into um, long chain hydrocarbons that look like diesel fuel. So this is our biofuel over here. Now, we have uh, a little bit of a challenge here. So triglycerides are hydrophobic, meaning they don't like water. They're non-polar molecules. And so is the biofuel. And our thing that we need to react it with is methanol. That's what we're going to um, use to break up the biofuel. That is a very polar molecule. And we need a catalyst. A catalyst is just something that helps the reaction go faster. So we need to use sodium hydroxide as a catalyst to get this reaction to go faster. Otherwise, um, it just would never produce enough for us to have usable amounts. So sodium hydroxide and methanol get mixed together. And that's a very hydrophilic, meaning it loves water or it's polar like water solution. 
um, and then it produces a glycerol. So when we react the triglyceride plus the methanol, when we have a catalyst present, present we get a biofuel and then a glycerol. Now we have kind of a problem that we need to figure out how to overcome. So we need to react a polar solution. If you recall, remember that the sodium hydroxide catalyst and the methanol, those are very polar. And we need to react that with a nonpolar so solution, which is our triglyceride. Well, polar and not nonpolar, if you've ever looked at water and oil, they really don't like to mix. In fact, they form um, layers and have as little much, as little touching each other as possible. The problem is that our reaction primarily takes place where those two substances are touching. So we need to increase the surface area where the two different solutions are touching. Our reaction rate, how fast our reaction goes, is going to also be a function of this surface area. So what we want is to have good mixing in between those two polar and nonpolar solutions. So we need to have an increase in that surface area in order to increase our rate of reaction. So here's what we're going to do to make biodiesel. And this is something that your teacher will demonstrate for you. Um, methanol and sodium hydroxide in the concentrations that we're using at the temperatures that we're using can be dangerous. And so um, somebody who has been trained to work with these chemicals um, needs to do this reaction. So first, um, your teacher will make a solution of methanol and dissolve sodium hydroxide in that. That makes a, a methoxide solution. And then your teacher will heat up a, a volume of vegetable oil. It needs to be warm enough to get this reaction to go um, to our, pro our desired products with, and not be too hot um, to have the vegetable oil break down. So it has to be tightly controlled in temperature. So we're going to heat the oil to 60 degrees C. Now it's important that anybody doing this reaction um, or watching the reaction be wearing the proper safety equipment. Safety glasses and gloves um, must be worn and it should be done under a fume hood or a very well ventilated area. Then after we have made our first solution and we've he heated up our oil for our second solution we're going to mix the solution one into the oil and stir very vigorously. That's, de that's increasing that surface area, that contact between the two solutions for 30 minutes. This is going to take and um, about that long t for this reaction to to go as far as it can go to completion. And now the ha the temperature has to be kept between 55 and 65 degrees C, and it cannot exceed 70 degrees C. So if it goes below 55, the reaction won't be done in half an hour. If it goes above 70, then it starts to break down the oil, and we get other things that we don't want in our products. So this should make enough for five groups to do the product analysis that we're going to talk about a little bit later. Now, we still have the catalyst. Catalyst doesn't get used up in a reaction. So we still have this catalyst of um, sodium hydroxide, which is a, a base. And so we want to neutralize that sodium hydroxide. And we do that by adding vinegar, which is an acid to our flask and that neutralizes um, that solution. So we have basically just water in with the glycerol. And then we need to either centrifuge it, which basically is a uh, faster way of settling, or if we don't have a centrifuge, we let it sit until we have um, pretty distinct layers of oil and a water phase. And then we can separate the two phases. The bottom, the bottom phase is the water phase or the hydrophilic and glycerol phase and then we can take that off and throw that away um, and then we'll have our biodiesel. Chemical engineers are concerned with 
big processes. So we do this in the lab or the chemist will figure out the process in the lab and then the chemical engineer's job is to scale that up so that it's um, at a, enough volume or rate in, to make uh, mass production. So we need to think about some things that have to change when we scale up from a small volume, test volume, to a larger volume, and the things that need to stay the same. Some things, the things that need to um, change, we need to obviously have a larger volume. We need to have our flow rates of our materials in and out of a reactor um, increase. And then we need to um, have more energy put in. So if there's more material, we have to heat it up to a certain uh, temperature. We need to put more energy into that greater amount of material. The things that have to stay the same are the temperature. So our reaction happens at the right temperature. So that has to stay the same. Pressures, similar thing. Our reaction will happen at, at the right pressure. So that has to stay the same. Our concentration uh, can uh, comparison between our reactants must stay the same because um, that gets our reaction um, in the right amounts uh, to go to our, our products. And then how much we mix, the degree of mixing has to stay the same, which is a function of our residence time, which is the average time that a little particle stays in our vessel here. So, like I said before, residence time is the average amount of time that a molecule or particle spends in our system. We can think about it as residence time in a room during class would be our class time. Your residence time in the hallway if you're walking between your auditorium and your common area. Um, or the residence time in, of a molecule in a reactor. And the way we calculate the residence time of a molecule and reactor, the average time, is the volume of the reactor divided by the flow rate of the um, products. So we need to do some product analysis in order to see if we have gotten the biodiesel that is similar enough to diesel to be able to burn in our diesel engine. So we're going to look at three um, pieces of product quality. We're going to talk about the density and compare the density between vegetable oil, biodiesel, and diesel. We're going to compare the viscosity and we're going to compare flame temperature. So let's talk about what density is. Density is the amount of material or the grams of something, the mass of something in a certain volume. So it's mass per volume. So we're going to talk about how we can measure that um, and whether or not biodiesel should be more or less dense than the original oil. Well, if we think about um, how these molecules are made up, so our triglyceride is three molecules that's stuck together at this top area. And our biofuel has been broken apart in three different molecules, so they get to um, move a little more independently. And that would lead us to believe that our biodiesel should be less dense than the original oil because those molecules can move around independently and kind of move away from each other. So we should expect to have less mass per volume. So we could measure density very accurately um, using a densitometer, but really all we need to do is take a known volume and weigh it and see how much that um, weighs or how much mass. So we can do that by taking, say, one milliliter um, of volume of our sample, whether it's biodiesel, diesel, or vegetable oil, and um, weigh that and then calculate the density by dividing the mass with the volume and that will give us our density. Viscosity, we need to talk about what viscosity is. Basically viscosity is um, how the material uh, resists 
a shear force or a, a, a pushing force. A shear force is more of a um, two surfaces moving against one another creates a shear force. So it's how the molecules move against one another. You can think about it about um, in the way of if you were to take a spoon and push it through water. Water is very not viscous and you could easily push a spoon through water. Whereas if you tried to push a spoon through molasses, it would be much more difficult because molasses is more um, viscous. And so this is just sort of a measure of how the molecules are be able to move past one another in a material. So how can we measure this? And um, should biodiesel, should we expect biodiesel to be more or less viscous than the original oil? Well, if you think about the original oil as these triglycerides that are kind of like tripods, if you think about how tripods might move against one another, it probably is a whole lot more difficult than, say, little lines of spaghetti. So um, the lines represent what our biodiesel has turned into. So we would expect that the biodiesel should be less viscous than the oil that we started out with. And we could measure it using a viscometer, um, and that would give us an accurate measurement. But what we really care about is um, something that's a little easier to measure. This viscometer can be very messy. We want to do, um, we don't really need an exact quantitative measure. We just need to be able to compare. So what we're going to do is sort of a qualitative measure of viscosity. and what you'll do in the lab is um, get a relative viscosity by measuring the time that it takes for a plug that we put in this small graduated cylinder um, to move down through our solution. So you fill the graduated cylinder with five milliliters of your, of your sample. You're going to use a magnet and hold a metal plug in at the top of the um, liquid. You'll get ready with your timer and as you uh, start the time you'll take away the magnet and allow the plug to fall to the bottom and measure the amount of time that it takes for this plug to reach to the bottom. You're going to do this with the oil, with the biodiesel, and with diesel and compare the relative viscosity. So if a solution is more viscous, it should take longer time for that plug to reach the bottom. The last piece of um, product analysis you're going to do is a flame temperature test. You're going to take a few milliliters of a sample, put it in a sample vial. You're going to place the wick in the vial and uh, hold that wick at a certain height above the top of the vial using some wire. When you light the wick, you'll wait for the flame to get established and use then a thermocouple to um, carefully measure the flame temperature. And as you measure the flame temperature, you should also note what the flame looks like and measure the burn rate. You can do this by sitting your vial on a scale and once the um, flame is established, you can start watching your uh, mass decrease on the scale given and for a specific time. So say um, five, 10 seconds and calculate how much mass of the fuel is burned during that amount of time. So that's what you'll be doing in next class.